Hey, and today we are chatting about dinosaurs. Why not? Um, with me is Victor Rademacher. He is a South African student currently studying towards his PhD in paleontology in the US of A. And he used to study at Bits University. Um, and he's recently published a very interesting paper on how do dinosaurs breathe. And he worked on a very specific species about a meter, meter and a half in size. And a full skeleton was found in 2009 by Professor Peter Clapp of the Albany Museum near the small town of Rousseau in the Eastern Bay. And uh, so he's found very interesting stuff about how this specific species um, breeds. First, tell me, how do dinosaurs normally breathe? What do we know about the breathing mechanism? Yeah, uh, that, that's a, a complicated question, and I'll, I'll try my best to keep it streamlined. Um, but some of the most exciting research in the last you know, th three decades of, of dinosaur research has uh, been the, you know, the revelation somewhat that the birds are just very strange dinosaurs themselves, that they are distinct from dinosaurs. Um, so what we know is that the skeletons of birds um, have a bunch of scars basically left behind by their, by their own unique uh, breathing system. Birds have a, a fixed rigid lung um, with a series of air sacs connected to it. And those air sacs invade the skeleton and leave their mark behind um, in, in, in very obvious ways. And we can take the same anatomical breadcrumbs that we see in bird skeletons and look at the skeletons of dinosaurs like T-Rex and longer neck dinosaurs uh, and to infer that they were breathing in a, in a similar way uh, to birds. So we know that that uh, dinosaurs were, were, were breathing like birds, um, but uh, you know our, our new paper has shown that that might not be the case for all dinosaurs. Tell me a little bit about Heterodontosaurus. Heterodontosaurus. And how does it breathe? And what did you find? Yeah. So, uh, Heterodontosaurus uh, has, well, in this new uh, specimen in particular, preserves a whole bunch of new anatomical information that we didn't know about this um, about this dinosaur before. Uh, and part of that that new anatomical information includes uh, little um, ribs of the sternum called sternal ribs. Uh, it has two sternal plates, which are two big uh, rectangular bones in its chest. Um, and then it also has these tiny little uh, toothpick-like uh, bones embedded in its uh, six-pack six muscles. Mm -hmm. And we see very similar features uh, to, to that in, in modern-day crocodilians, actually. So uh, those toothpick uh, six-pack uh, bones, uh, they contract um, on the abdominal muscles and, and they help uh, deform the body and, and force air in and out. And working with those bones are also those bones of, of the chest and of the sternum. So the sternal ribs of Heterodontosaurus in particular have uh, very characteristic joints on them that are very similar to the joints we see in crocodile rib cages. Um, but connecting those sort of dots, it looks that the Heterodontosaurus was breathing a little bit more like a crocodile and not quite like a bird, which is kind of the opposite trend of, um, of, of the last three decades of dinosaur research. Where does this specific species fit into the greater scheme of dinosaurs? Another good question. <laughs> so there are three flavors of dinosaurs. They are, uh, you know, your, your meat eaters like T-Rex and Velociraptor. Um, but then you also have uh, long neck dinosaurs like uh, Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus. Uh, and then you have my favorites, which are the awesome spiky uh, herbivorous dinosaurs called Ornithischians. So this includes things like Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and Kylosaurus, uh, dinosaurs. And Heterodontosaurus is right at the base of, of the Ornithischian family tree. So it's a, somewhat of a missing link in between proto-dinosaurs and, and, the, and these Ornithischian dinosaurs. So that's why it's interesting to know how this specific species breathes because it's part of the whole process of development. Correct. And, it has, it has uh, very big implications for how we understand um, the evolution of this group and, and what sort of big macroevolutionary changes that they underwent and what, what shaped their evolutionary history. 
how does how does South African dinosaurs and South African find fit into the greater scheme of things? So my colleagues and I like to joke that uh, all the dinosaurs that you see in, in movies are, are are really boring. They all you know from relatively young uh, rocks. They're you know sixty five million years old approximately. Um, but the, the dinosaurs in South Africa are, that we find in South Africa, are around about 200 million years old. So they are not only incredibly ancient, um, but they're also a, pretty strange that they're not as obvious. Uh, you know, when you look at them, you don't always know what you're looking at. And that's not only interesting from a research perspective, it means job security for us, but it, it means that um, it's the South African fossil record. Um, has the potential to explain how dinosaurs evolved and what sort of big uh, evolutionary steps that they went through. Uh, so South Africa really records the, the the awkward teenage phase of dinosaur evolution. Um, you know, the transition from proto dinosaurs to true dinosaurs is recorded in pretty high detail um, in South Africa. That's a really good explanation. Thank you so much Thank you. and good luck with your studies. Thank you very much for having me.